Hello students, today let us study about the topic Bionomics and Management of the Stored Grain Pests under the main subject Agrochemical and Pest Control. Several insects and mites can infest stored grain, whether the grain is being held in bulk in elevators and mills, in large quantities on the farm or in small lots in the household. The grain also may react with moisture to produce heat which in turn aids survival of stored grain pests during low winter temperatures. Problems with stored grain pests can usually be traced back to a source of moisture whether it is in the grain itself or from an outside source. Outside sources of moisture may include leaking roofs, poor surface drainage or underground seepage. Good management practices that reduce excess moisture are important components of stored grain pest management. Good sanitation such as the removal of old, damaged and possibly infested grain should always be practiced before storing new grain. Hence, in this episode, the following aspects are going to be seen. They are Influence of abiotic environmental factors on pests of stored grain. Influence of biotic environmental factors on pests of stored grain. Primary pest of stored grain. Secondary pest of stored grain. And the integrated pest management approach for stored grain includes. Moving on to the first aspect that is influence of abiotic environmental factors on pests of stored grain. The important abiotic factors are temperature, moisture and gas concentrations. Let us study about these one by one. Temperature. Below a certain minimum threshold temperature, insects do not complete development from egg to maturity and the pest population cannot increase. At temperatures only slightly above the threshold, say within 4 to 5 degrees centigrade, mortality rates are extremely high for virtually all stages of development. Most species do not multiply fast enough to become a pest until temperature is somewhere between 3 to 6 degrees centigrade above the minimum threshold for development. The highest rate of oviposition usually occurs at a temperature above or just below the developmental optimum. Temperature has a profound impact on insect and mite locomotion. The net effect being that insects tend to move out of areas where temperature is unfavorable and relocate in more favorable zones. The second that is moisture. Different developmental stages of insects mites and fungi have different susceptibilities to aridity or excessive moisture. Generally, the dormant stages are eggs and pupae for insects. Eggs and resting stages of mites and spores of fungi can best resist desiccation while active feeding stages may die out if conditions are too dry. Insects depend primarily on their food supply for moisture to carry on their life processes. Stored product insects can develop on food with moisture content as low as 2 to 14 percent. Moisture requirements vary with species. Generally, optimum grain moisture for development and reproduction is 14 to 18 percent. Most species do not develop below 10 percent. Some exceptions are the Mediterranean floor moth and capra beetle which can develop on food with negligible moisture content. Weevils cannot live on grain containing moisture of less than 10% and lesser grain borers can subsist on grain with 9% moisture content while the confused floor beetles can live on 2% moisture grain. Next moving on to gas concentrations. Metabolic activities of grain but to a much greater extent of mites, insects and especially fungi 
may cause local reduction in the concentration of oxygen and increases in carbon dioxide. As grain settles, intergranular passageways become constricted or even blocked if dust or grain particles are present. Low levels of oxygen and high levels of carbon dioxide cause metabolic stress on insects, mites and aerobic microorganisms, generally increasing mortality while lowering fecundity and rates of development. If oxygen should drop below 2.5% conditions, they become lethal for insects. But fungi can survive with levels lower than 1% oxygen. Moving on to the second aspect that is influence of biotic environmental factors on pests of stored grain. The important biotic factors are food and competition. Food. Grain itself is just one of several resources used by pests for nourishment. Stored grains are an ideal food source for stored product insect pests, providing the essential elements required for continued growth and development. A level of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, and vitamins required varies with the species concerned. The Indian meal moth, warehouse moth, Mediterranean floor moth and sword tooth grain beetle cannot live in artificial diet containing carbohydrates of less than 20%. While the confused floor beetle and cigarette beetle can live on food stuff with less than 2% carbohydrates. Some insects utilize fats in food materials as their source of energy and some such as the warehouse moths and tropical house moths, fats are indispensable. Their adults will partially or completely lack scales on their wings or fail to emerge from pupae if fats are not available. The second is competition. At low and moderate population densities, members of a given species will improve conditions for their fellows. Initial attacks on hard grains may make things easier for the next, while heat and moisture released by metabolic activity may push temperature and moisture into more favorable zones or at least encourage the growth of other species. Beyond optimum population densities, the scramble for food, for mates and for oviposition sites enhances mortality, lowers rates of development and leads to lower fecundity. Competition for food is more severe between species which have the same nutritional and ecological requirements. Parasites and predators have to some extent helped in reducing insect populations. Some insects such as tribolium species or floor beetles exhibit cannibalism. <music> Moving on to the third important aspect that is primary pest of stored grain. Grain insect pest may be divided into primary and secondary pests. Primary grain insects have the ability to attack whole, unbroken grains while secondary pests attack only damaged grain, dust and milled products. The primary pests of stored grains are lesser grain borer, granary weevil and rice weevil. Let us study about them one by one. Lesser grain borer or Rhizopertha dominica. The lesser grain borer is the most serious pest of stored grain in Western Australia. It is a dark brown cylindrical beetle of about 3 mm long. The head is hidden by the thorax when weaved from above. Females lay up to 500 eggs scattered loosely through the grain. The eggs hatch to produce curved white larvae with brown heads and three pairs of legs. 
the larvae burrow into slightly damaged grains and eat out of the starchy interior. After pupating, the adults emerge from the grain leaving large irregular exist holes. The life cycle takes from 3 to 6 weeks depending on the temperature. Adults may live up to 2 months. The adult lesser grain borers chief grain voraciously causing damage which facilitate infestation by a secondary pest. It is a strong flyer and may rapidly migrate from infested grain to begin new infestations elsewhere. Granary weevil or Cytophilus granarius. When distributed, it sits very still for several minutes. An adult lays up to 450 eggs singly in holes chived in cereal grains. Each egg hatches into a white legless larva which eats the grain from the inside. The larva pupates within the grain and the adult then chews its way out. The exit holes are characteristic signs of weevil damage. The life cycle takes about one month under summer conditions and the adults may survive for a further 8 months. The granary weevil is a small dark brown black beetle about 4 mm long. It has biting mouth parts at the front of the rostrum and two club like antennae. Next is rice weevil or Cytophilus oryzae. An adult lays up to 450 eggs singly in holes chived in cereal grains. Each egg hatches into a white legless larva which eats the grain from the inside. The larva pupates within the grain and the adult then chews its way out. The exit holes are characteristic signs of weevil damage. The life cycle takes about one month under summer conditions and the adults may survive for a further eight months. The rice weevil has four orange-brown areas on the wing cases and it is about 3 mm long with a characteristic rostrum that is a snout protruding from its head. It has biting mouth parts at the front of the rostrum and two club-like antennae. Unlike the granary weevil, the rice weevil is winged and may occasionally fly. Moving on to the third important aspect that is secondary pest of stored grain. The secondary pest of stored grains are confused floor beetle, flat grain beetle and Indian meal moth. Let us study about these beetles one by one. The confused floor beetle that is Tribolium confusum. The confused floor beetle closely resembles the rust red floor beetle in appearance and the life history except for the antenna segments which do not have a distinct three segmented club at the end. It is more often found in floor mills than on farms as it prefers more finely divided materials. The next is flat grain beetle that is Cryptolestus species. Flat grain beetles are small reddish brown insects about 1.5 mm long with long antennae and a flattened body. Eggs are laid throughout the stored grain and develop into tiny larvae with characteristic tail horns, biting mouth parts and three pairs of legs. They feed on damaged grain and wheat embryos. Pupation takes place in a cocoon. A complete life cycle takes from 4 to 5 weeks and the adults may survive up to 1 year. The next that is Indian meal moth or Plodia interpunctella. The adult Indian meal moth is grey with distinctive brownish red tips on the forewings. The female lays up to 200 eggs near the grain surface as it slowly passes from grain to grain spinning a silk-like thread. 
severe infestations may form a surface web on the grain heap. Larvae attack the wheat germ and then pupate in a cocoon which may be found in cracks and crevices of buildings. The insects quickly emerge as adult moths. A generation takes as little as four weeks under warm conditions. Moving on to the fifth aspect that is integrated pest management approach for stored grain. Stored grain insect pests are an economic concern. Growers should think about taking preventive measures before harvest to protect grain quality. Infestations can directly reduce grain weight and nutritional value in addition to indirectly causing mold and other contaminations. Integrated pest management that is IPM of stored grain pest should be implemented to increase overall profit. The important principles of integrated pest management are sanitation, empty bin treatments, grain cleaning and storage, grain protectants and top dressing, grain monitoring and fumigation. Let us study about them one by one. The first principle that is sanitation. This is the most important IPM practice for storing and protecting grain. Some experts say that successful sanitation is 80% of an effective IPM program in stored grains. Removing any potential pest and their food before filling grain bins will greatly enhance any subsequent management actions. So what are the measures to be undertaken in sanitation? Let us study about them. New grain should never be stored on top of existing grain. Remove old grain and clean bins before adding new grain. Clean all grain handling equipments before harvest and storage of new grain including combines, wagons, trucks, augers, aeration fans, etc. Remove any grain or grain dust from inside the bins by sweeping empty bins and brushing down walls. Remove any spilled grain from around the outside of the bin and storage facility. Carefully inspect storage bins and seal or caulk any cracks, holes or gaps that could be potential entry points for insects or rodents. Look for possible moisture leaks in the roof and repair if necessary. Remove any vegetation from within 10 feet of storage bins to discourage insects from establishing. The next principle is empty bin treatment. The inside walls and floors should be treated with a residual insecticide after thorough cleaning. The outside walls up to 15 feet and outside base of grain storage bins may also be treated. The area beneath the perforated drying floor should also be cleaned and treated with a residual insecticide. Treating empty bins is most effective when insect activity is likely in temperatures over 60 degree Fahrenheit. Common products for empty bin treatments may be difficult to find as labels expire. The third principle that is grain cleaning and storage. Another invaluable IPM tool for stored grain pest is making sure the kernels are clean prior to storage. Dirty grain can prevent adequate air flow and uniform aeration. Uneven cooling and drying can result in hot spots they tend to favor insect development. Unclean grain increases the potential for spoilage since broken kernels, wheat seeds and other debris often spoil at recommended moisture levels for storing grain. Excess grain dust can also form explosive aerosol dusts. Any grain protectants, top dressings or fumigations will be more effective with clean grain. Temperature and moisture management of stored grain is vital. 
it is crucial that the grain mass temperature should be reduced to 50 degrees Fahrenheit and the moisture is below 12 to 13 percent soon after storage. Colder temperatures will slow development of insects and inhibit molds and extend insecticide residuals. The next principle, grain protectants and top dressing. If grain is expected to remain in storage bins for over 12 months, consider using a protectant to reduce pest activity. These products are generally applied to whole grains as they are being augured, loaded or turned into storage facilities. A consistent rate of application is important to ensure an even distribution throughout the grass mass. Low pressures and large droplet sizes are recommended with pressurized spray systems. These products are not highly volatile and penetration into the kernel is limited. Do not apply grain protectants before high temperature drying because the extreme heat can cause rapid volatilization of the insecticide. Sometime a top dressing of insecticide is recommended instead of treating the entire grain mass. Applications should be made as soon as the grain bin is filled and the surface is level. Any disturbances to the surface may require another top dressing application. Follow label directions for these types of applications. Some products recommend treating the top 10 feet of grain and other products suggest the top few inches. The next principle that is grain monitoring. Any time the grain mass is above 50 degree Fahrenheit, it should be inspected for insects every two weeks. Samples should be taken from several depths and locations, paying particular attention to the grain mass surface. Central core and any developing hot spots. Proper insect identification is important to determine their damage potential and control options. Purdue extension put together a key to distinguish species. Control measures should be implemented immediately to protect grain quality. The next principle is fumigation. There are three options for stored grain infested with internal grain feeders, example weevils and lesser grain borer feed as is sell it at a discounted price or fumigate. Fumigants are extremely hazardous because of the application method and therefore are restricted use products and should be applied by a licensed professional. Unfortunately, fumigant insecticides have no residual activity and grain will become susceptible to reinfestation within 72 hours. Using proper sanitation prior to storing grain will likely prevent the need for fumigation. A storage bin with clean whole grain is important to deter insects that feed on broken kernels and grain dust. Finally, to conclude with today's topic, protection of the crops from pest infestations and keeping the pest under proper control has become in consideration due to the importance of the crops. Pest management is done by different methods such as cultural control, biological control, physical control, host plant resistance and assessing the economic thresholds to determine the need to apply pesticides. Thank you.